Welcome to Stories and Songs, the series of interviews and magicians in the world of jazz and improvisation. I'm Sophia Carbonara, and it's my great pleasure today to be talking to Cheryl jerome -Fitzical. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. Um, my first question for you, what have been the pivotal events in your musical journey? Yeah, um, I did think that a really strong one for me would have been being asked to play for Zanny Collect's Stand By Your Woman um, in uh, the Spire Ensemble. So this was the first time that I got asked to play in a, it was an all-female um, ensemble at the time, and it was the first time I played with non-males. <laughs> um, and the first time I really felt there was a cultural difference between those spaces um, which I hadn't had the privilege or opportunity to do before. Um, it felt different. It truly felt different. And I feel like the culture that Zanny created for that experience really um, has been my model of how to run ensembles and how to be present in ensembles ever since. Um, there wasn't the, you know, I don't know, culture of cutting down or like, standoff culture it was just all run with love and that truly it's uh, that that changed the way that I think about ensemble running since then that's so beautiful that's beautiful it, it, it was a beautiful <laughs> it was a beautiful ensemble <laughs> um my second question for you what obstacles mm -hmm. have you had to overcome during your musical life and how have you dealt with them yeah I reckon the largest obstacle has actually been with myself <laughs> um, and I tell this to students all the time like the stuff that we say to ourselves is worse than what most people would say to you what most people do say about you you know um, it's the thing that stops me from picking up my instrument it's the thing that stops me from writing um, and it's like a it's a lifelong process of working through that um, and working through those demons that you have with yourself. Um, so I think that honestly, psychology has helped. <laughs> honestly, like trying to just uh, so exercises in self worth and self esteem have really helped and been very necessary. Um, yeah, the uh I've I'm I've always been my own worst critic. And though I've also experienced barriers that are external to myself and that are actually uh, that are also very real, um I feel like uh the stronger I feel in myself, the better I am able to withstand external and internal barriers. So really that that has been the main the main help is external supports and internal work yes <laughs> here, it's like oh you said the worst things about yourself that people wouldn't say it. it's like oh it's true right. it's so <laughs> true <laughs> why, are just, why are we so mean to ourselves <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> um well this relates because you mentioned talking to your students but um my third question for you is do you have a motto a personal philosophy that guides you or what advice would you share with younger musicians yeah, I, I do. I definitely have. I have a few. Um, but I think my main one is like the no dickhead policy. And I wasn't sure if I was able to say dickhead in this or not. <laughs> but I'm gonna do it. You can you can you can you can bleep it out or, or uh cue in a, a more appropriate word <laughs> if you like. Um that means, you know, surrounding myself with good people and being a good person. Um you know, over uh, the best players, over anything like that, just because um, friends are the best people to make music with and they're the best people to create with, even if they're not, you know, the the, the top musicians that are in your community. They're the musicians that will keep your um, career sustainable, will keep your you fulfilled in life. So really I try my hardest to only perform with people that I really admire and respect and that have the same respect for me. I really try not to judge people that I'm around and, um, you know, 
just to 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 be a respectful person to show up on time to learn music to to not not bitch about people behind their backs you know so uh yeah the the no dickhead policy that's a really strong one for me and uh again it goes with the theme of love which i think is present in all of the music that i make um and i hope it will be forever and ever and ever uh because i think that it is a sustainable way of creating. Yeah. <laughs> is that all right? That was very- Yeah, very absolutely. Being a first one. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> I'm um, my, my final question for you is for you to nominate a song and album of your own creation so we can listen to some of your work and maybe let that know the story of that music or what that means to you or why you're sharing that now. Sure. I did think, look, I thought the perfect- a uh, composition to share with um, Gender Defying Jazz would be the piece that I was commissioned to write for the Monash Art Ensemble last year, which is actually going to be premiered um, in this year's Melbourne Women's International Jazz Festival. Um, and it's called A Pinky Promise. And, you know, it's kind of got a backstory. So I'm sure you can have access to it at some stage. You know, it's getting released in December. Um, and I guess the backstory is uh, my own, it's a pinky promise is supposed to be my own promise to keep fighting for the cause and to keep um, diversity as just a, a core value that I um will try to continue to uphold through the rest of my career to keep fighting for diversity. Um, it's got three movements in it. Um, the first movement is supposed to be to those left behind, um, kind of an ode to the people that have been damaged by the community and bullied and harassed and all of the, all of the terrible things that do exist in you know places where there are there there are people that hold power and people that don't. Um, the second movement is called Diversity Poster Girl, which uh, is about my own struggles with it all and my own struggles with uh, being selected for things and being. Um, sorry, one second, <laughs> one second. Oh, I'm just going to pause there, Stephen. Just one second, if you just I'm just doing a little interview. Yeah, yeah, you can wash your hands, just uh, be a little quiet. <laughs> okay, second movement. <laughs> the second movement is called Diversity Poster Girl, and it is about my own struggles with, I guess, uh, being a diverse person who, you know, is creating music, is being asked to create music, is being given opportunities. Um and it's just that constant self-questioning that happens within all of those processes. So that's the second movement. And the third movement is called hope, which is working, like the hope that things are improving and the hope that things will get better and that we will continue to move towards an equitable society for in, in gender, in race, in um, ability, in age, in um class especially you know specific, yeah very much class in in all sorts of arenas so i think that it's a, a it was a very um deep and you know somewhat personal work to write and i hope it's you know powerful to hear yeah i can't wait to hear that music That's thanks deep it's all deep yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't not I can't not do the deep stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for your time and thank you for your wisdom. And I know you're working with Hannah Defining Jazz this year a little bit. So Yes, I am. Yeah, yep. Beautiful. Look forward Very to Very exciting. Very more from you always. <laughs> cool. Thank you.